Good morning, everyone. My name's Olympia Yager, and I'm with GoTerra, and we're a farm feed company out of Canberra. Uh, we're turning food waste into livestock feed using insects. So m the big topic in the sustainable um, agricultural conversation is that how do we feed the 2050 population? So the increase in production is going to be need to be 100%. And at GoTerra, we're a glass half, uh, uh, half full company, so we think that's a forward purchase order for our company to meet 200, 2050 um, production requirements. Australia is not on track to meet those targets, so there are challenges inherent in making the targets to increase our production to that capacity. And the biggest um, contributor to those challenges is climate change. So for us as a feed, feed company, we look at that and it's like we have 70% of your production costs thereabouts are going to be in farm feed. And if climate change is going to make those production costs go up and down dramatically, how can we help Australian farmers be more agile, have a, have a flat rate um, cost on their feed, and, and through that grow so they can meet those production costs? So one of the largest contributors to climate change is methane gas. One of the biggest contributors of methane gas, or makers of methane gas, is food waste. In fact, if food waste was a country, it would be the third largest contributor of methane gas in the world. Australia throws away five, uh, one bag of every five bags of groceries we buy. So that's just on a basic waste. It works out to be about four million tonnes of food waste going into landfill every year, which is really expensive. In Canberra, that's 300 bucks a tonne to manage on a food waste. So here we've got two problems, and they're both interlinked. And how can we make both, uh, find an answer to both of them? Well, luckily, I met this guy. So as I stand in front of you, I'm the once upon a time wool classer who's trying to make flies cool to Australians. <laughs> I've always liked a challenge. So Hermetia lucens is one of the most amazing um, insects in the planet, as far as we're concerned. They're not a vector for, human, for disease, they don't have a mouth part. So most Australians will have never seen this fly because they don't sit on livestock, they're not interested in participating in this great Australian salute, and they don't try and get on your food. They are only interested in laying eggs so that the larva can continue their life cycle. So what does that look like for us? Well, every tonne of larva requires two and a half tonnes of food waste for the 14-day growth cycle, which creates about 180 kilos of larva meal, which is a really far, far end of the final product, and about 250 kilograms of fertiliser. So it is truly a cyclical and sustainable process. Food waste goes in, larva comes out, we turn it into meal, we feed it to chickens, we eat the chickens, we don't eat all our nuggets, that comes back to me, and we start all over again. From a farming perspective, I don't need any arable land. We've just moved into a commercial facility thanks to an ACT innovation grant. I have no arable land requirement. We're in an industrial um, warehouse complex. Less than a litre of water per kilo of protein, which is less than crickets, um, and we can produce same amount of quantities out of those environments. So we're not taking up land from um, animal protein sources. Market-wise, who's going to eat it? We highly recommend these for monogastric only. Um, I want to be famous, but not for mad cow disease. So this is pet food, chickens, pork, and aquaculture. The products that we're looking at will be um, dried larva or larva meal. And the combined feed value for, the, for these uh, four streams is about $800 million in Australia. <clears throat> well, what does that mean for us? How do I get Australian farmers to like flies enough to buy them, to feed them to their chickens? It's a brand new market. It's just, this industry has only just started. 2010 was when the first commercial farms began. Um, so we're looking, we're, our path to market is going to be through the pet food industry. That is they are a dual segment. They're, they're your consumer, so they have some social justice over how you produce their protein, and they are also my consumer. So backyard chickens population in Canberra is 170,000, and we think they're going to be the best brand ambassadors for our product, both on our end and on your end. Commercially, it works out to be about $1,500 a tonne based on our processing methods right now, and we're working to be scaled up to 
commercial production in three years. We've developed a technology with our technology partner, Solution Blue, and right now we've got a modular process. We cannot find a similar processing system in the world right now, um, and we're looking at 52 tonnes wet per year per two, two metres squared. So it's an agile, regional and modular system that we believe will impact Australians in regional areas, not only in food production, providing livestock feed with a flat line price rate, it will not go up when it rains or when there's drought, it will not go down due to market forces, and, and it will be grown right where you are. Thanks. I had a bit of gallop there in the end. Well done, well done. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a question for Olympia. Hello. Oops. I don't know. I can hear. You. Hello. Hi. Great. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the presentation, Olympia. Um, just a little bit of feedback. With with only five minutes, you've got to be really careful. Yeah, I went over. To make sure you get through yep. everything. And yep. what was a bit disappointing was we didn't hear enough about your go to market and yep. and stuff that's specific to, sure. to GoTerra. Yep. Um, really convincing on the argument about the sustainability impact and, and, and all the kind of macro stuff. If I had to guess, I'm going to say this is going to boil down to an intellectual property play or an execution play in terms of your, you know, GoTerra's individual success. So which of those is it going to be and how are you going to convince an investor that you've got what it takes? We think it's a, pro we think it's a processing play. Um, intellectually, property-wise, um, we do believe that that... that Technology is very, very important, and we will be trying to keep it proprietary. But long term, we look at that industry-wide, is that those processing techniques will benefit the industry as a whole. And so we're looking on um, how we're going to pr process more than technology. So um, did I answer your question? Sorry. I think I just got a little lost in yeah. <laughs> nervousness. Kind of, sort of, but, uh, but you, in terms of your go-to-market, if it's regional, yep. how do you handle those regional areas? Yeah, Who's sure. going to do that? How many regions Sorry, do you end up in? Yeah, sorry. Um, so because it's modular, what we're planning to do will be that it'll be inserted into waste management facilities in regional areas, and, be, and we can process per their output in those regional areas. And then instead of shipping, because currently we're shipping food waste out of those regional areas at a cost, we will process there. The shipping out will be lower, and it'll actually have a value to it on the product end. 